At number nine, high drama on the Green Bays, the greatest snooker shootout in history. The final frame, the final black. There was only the black left on the table. The last ball in the last frame of the biggest snooker match in the world. Dennis Taylor had been one of snooker's underachievers. The crowds loved him against Davis, the man that many of us thought was kind of a robot in disguise, a man with no discernible personality at all. Steve and myself never thought about what was happening in millions of homes. And we didn't realise that there was nearly 19 million people. I'm still going to be up after midnight. I have never known an atmosphere like this. Everyone was just wrapped with attention watching this, this incredible drama. A good one. You could feel the tension yourself. I mean, you know, my hands were sweating watching it. So goodness knows uh, what he was like. But my next shot, I think, confused Steve a little bit because I tried to double the black from the bottom cushion into the top pocket. Sometimes you take a shot like that on. And I hit it hard enough so if it didn't go in there, it might go in the bottom pocket. So the, the black was going up and down the table and I missed both pockets. I'm sure Dennis wouldn't mind my saying he chanced his own. Fortunately, it, it went safe again, and I think that one confused Steve because he, he messed up his next safety shot. A defending world champion, Steve Davis, looks hard at that back. And I'll never forget trying to pop this black into the green corner pocket. I remember thinking, keep your head still, use all your years of experience. That was the theory behind it. When I delivered the cue, I lifted my head about, I don't know how many inches off the cue, and my right arm shot out, and I missed the black by, by a long way. And I'll never forget looking as it was coming back up the table, I thought I might fluke it in the, in, and I seen it wasn't going in the pocket. Walked away back to my seat and I thought I'd blown it. That was the biggest shot of his life. And when I turned round, I remember pushing my glasses up, and I turned around, and the black wasn't quite as easy as, uh, you know, as everyone thought. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. One of the great things about that match was the fallibility, the fact that you get the impression that these guys never miss. The great thing about that final was that shots were missed. Davis comes back. You think, he's going to get it, this is it, it's all over. It's just, you know, forget it, it's all over. No. And then he misses. This is really unbelievable. And then Dennis came up. I didn't grip the cue on that last shot. I just let the butt of the cue rest on my four fingers and kept my thumb out of the way, and really so that I couldn't snatch at the shot. He's done it. Dennis Taylor, for the first time, becomes Embassy World Snooker Champion, 1985. You can't put into words how I felt when that black went in. It was just 13 years of trying to become world champion all coming out. And the way I reacted afterwards, I mean, I was stamping the cue and I lifted it above my head. And then I was pointing the finger. The whole place here at the Crucible erupting for this very popular Irishman. I, I couldn't believe that that was me. At last, I've become world champion. I've realised a dream. And that was just uh, all the emotions coming out in a matter of seconds.